Okay, well, well, we have a guest right here in the studio, uh, Chukwe Meka Eze. Good morning, good to have you. Good morning, uh, thank you. <laughs> nice yes. to have you join us. Okay, so um, George H.W. Bush finally passes at the age of, uh, ripe old age of 90, uh, 94. 94. Uh, not many people can actually, uh, you know, uh, boast of the kind of resume that he had in, in his lifetime. Former CIA director, he's been president, though, I mean, somebody actually described him as the best one-time president that the United States has ever had. Uh, talk to us about, you know, your views about him. Basically, he has a rich resume. Mm. Uh, we can take it from different segments. With respect to his importance, his legacy, his, the milestones that can be attached to him in the international community. Uh, recall that he led Operation Desert, Desert Storm. Storm. Desert Storm. Mm. Yes, in 1991, oh. the coalition of 30 nations, when the United Nations Security Council refused to approve the invasion of Iraq, he had to mobilize 30 nations, including Arab countries, and they were able to overcome Iraq. Uh, that was when Iraq invaded Kuwait. Mm -hmm. So within 100 hours, they overran Iraq. Mm. Uh, besides, you recall that in order to, to appease the Arab participants in that uh, coalition, he had to organize the Madrid conference okay. that uh, gave a teat to the improved relationship between the PLO and uh, Israel. Mm. So the Palestinians and Israel were able to speak, and uh, that dovetailed into the Nor Oslo-Norway Conference of 1993. Mm -hmm. Then he had left power, but he had laid the foundation. In fact, recall that during that war involving Iraq, mm -hmm. Iraq was sending Scud missiles to, Jeruz to, to Israel. Israel. Mm -hmm. And it was George Bush that made sure that Israel did not retaliate. If Israel had retaliated, the war would have taken a different, a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Yes, so George Bush was instrumental, and he oversaw the end of the Cold War. He also saw the fall of the Berlin Wall, yes. the end of the Warsaw Pact, and the fall of the former USSR. Yes. So he okay. saw all this during his tenure. But it's actually see why he didn't win a second term was because of the failing economic mm -hmm. policies in his country. He had earlier told them, read my lips. Mm. No, no, no taxes. taxes. <laughs> there will be taxes. <laughs> but later, no when, taxes. in order yeah. to bridge the deficit mm -hmm. in the economy, he had to introduce taxes. Mm. And that was his greatest undoing. Because of that, the Americans said no. no. You succeeded externally, but internally you have failed. Mm. If you had made up both ways, basically George Bush would have been one of the greatest, or the greatest American, though he's one of the greatest. Mm. Mm. But definitely, when a man is dead, you give him all the accolades. All the accolades. Yes. But uh, we need not quickly forget that he was a good family man. Mm. He, he can Married see for how long years. for 73 years, and had five surviving children, mm -hmm. of which one was the former U.S. president, and one nearly became. Yeah. Exactly. Jeb Bush Jeb contested Bush. for Republican nomination mm. in 2016, but lost to the current well, of course he was governor, president, governor, governor of uh, Florida. So yeah. We never know whether tomorrow he might Jeb or Neil or Marvin mm -hmm. or even Dorothy the remaining four children who mm. had not become U.S. president. Could One could become. <laughs> All right. US now, president. there are lots of debate as to the current president now, President Trump, yes. what his role will be at the funeral of, uh, of uh, Bush. One analyst was saying that, well, it is, it is, it is normal that the, a president, a sitting president would or should attend the funeral mm of a former president or a president who has passed. But well, considering the fact that he did not show up at um, you know, Donald Trump's in inaugural, and no. he, they didn't really de demonstrate a lot of support for yeah, Donald but, Trump. Yeah, but, but, the Bushes but, but, generally. The, but the, system, yeah. the system in the United States allows or makes the president mm. mandatorily to be yeah. at the funeral, except if something exceptional happens where he's incapacitated. But the point there is, 
a lot of analysts are saying that if President Trump goes there, certainly he's going to make the, make, make the occasion about himself, himself and not about uh, uh, George W. H. Uh, Bush. And Let's watch what do you say? I think a section of the media wants to make the matter controversial. Okay, okay. Because Trump had been taken along by the family. Mm. But before they even, I think, openly announced it, that they had informed him. Mm. He issued a statement after the family had earlier issued a statement. I will be there on Wednesday mm. the, at the National Cathedral in Washington. Mm. So uh, let's not speculate on the drama. But everything about Trump is controversial. Yes. Even if he did not, even if he fails to generate one, the media will, will generate, generate one, one on his behalf. Eh? So basically, <laughs> let, let's, let's look forward to And, the and let me just throw this I mean, a lot of people have been comparing the Bush family with the Kennedys. Yeah. Okay. And saying, okay, yes. let's, yeah. yeah. Presidential family. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, uh, yes they, they, are, they are unique in their own ways. Yeah. The Kennedy family, yes. Uh, Jeff Kennedy and all that, the robot. But the Bush family, you recall, they are Republicans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are Republicans. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, you cannot write off Jeb becoming a president one day. So uh, perhaps strong the, possibility. At the okay. end of right. the day, that family may even overtake all right. the, the candidates. Right? Tugat Maka okay. Eze, thank you so much for uh, coming on the program this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm grateful. All right. Thank you. We have to